businesses to call the roll, please. Commissioner Oliver? Present. Mr. Davidson? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. I almost did it. <laughs> Commissioner Boyd? Here. Commissioner McMurray? Here. Commissioner Gooch? Here. Chairman Dodd? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Second order of business, Vice Chair Wilson, if you would uh, entertain the minutes. Thank you, Chairman. I have reviewed the minutes from our last meeting, which was in November. I find them to be in order, and without objection, I move for their approval. And a second from Commissioner Oliver. All those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Great, thank you. The first committee report we have is Health Department. Director Crumbie. Hello, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen of the um, commission, um, hopefully you have uh, your health department report, uh, report there available to you. Your health department continues to do good work for the people of Rutherford County and we are proud to serve. Um, and going along the columns of our mission to protect, promote, and improve the health and prosperity of the people in Tennessee. With uh, protection, you'll see our figures for disease intervention, immunizations, environmental health center column there with health education, outreach, community participation, and vital records administration. And then finally, um, with improvement, that's more of our primary care, our ch child health, our clinical services, WIC, family planning, and so forth. And um, our December report reflects that in nearly every category, our numbers have increased over last year. So you can see that's progressing ex exactly as we, um, we want it to as we enter the post-emergency response phase of the pandemic. Um, some updates, uh, COVID-19, the CDC continues to rate our community level as low. Um, they base that number on uh, COVID-19 admissions to hospitals and then staffed beds in hospitals, and both those are still um, under 10%, which is, is what you wanna see. Uh, at the Rutherford County Health Departments, both locations, we offer free rapid testing Monday through Friday for COVID from eight to 4.30. Um, we still offer the nurse administered testing on Fridays by appointment. We do have the vaccines available, the Pfizer vaccine available from eight to 10 or one to three as a walk-in basis, Monday through Friday. And that's available to anyone six months or older. We have the booster, the bivalent booster, and that's specifically targeted at some of the Omicron variants, some of the more prevalent strains. And those are available uh, to people five years or older, as long as it's been more than two months since your primary dose or your last. Um, nationwide, almost 80% of eligible people have had at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. Um, and 16% have had the most recent booster. In Tennessee, those numbers are a little lower. 58% have had at least one dose and only 5% have had the most recent booster. The FDA is gonna meet on Thursday of this week to discuss moving to an annual booster model for the vaccine. And um, so we kind of anticipate what they, um, what they come to a, a discernment there. Um, with monkeypox or the mpox, as they uh, prefer us to call it, uh, we have some good news. C cases remain low and vaccine utilization is high. So Department of Health and Human Services does not expect to renew the emergency declaration once it does expire this January 31st. Um, we will continue to monitor the situation and will update as needed or as requested. But for our purposes, the um, mpox may fall off of our report. We do offer monkeypox or mpox vaccines um, Monday through Friday from eight to 10 or, or one to three as a walk-in basis. And then we do testing by appointment. Um, anyone concerned with an unusual rash can call our health department and we will get you talking to the right people. With the uh, flu activity in Tennessee, uh, you may recall in December, or late November, early December, Tennessee was among the highest in the nation. Um, but those numbers are considerably improved. Uh, now our rating is considered only moderate according to CDC tracking. 
Um, flu shots are free and available during our walk-in hours of 8 to 10 and 1 to 3 Monday through Friday to anyone of six months of age or older. And then um, we have uh, an exciting event coming up that I wanted to inform you about, and this is the return of our community baby shower. And some of you may be familiar with that. This will be our eighth annual baby shower. Um, we're excited because it has been a virtual event for the past two years, and, and of course that affects participation and it presents challenges that you are hard to overcome. But um, we are returning to an in-person baby shower and the uh, health department hosts this event along with our community partners and we provide a day of informative classes, car seat safety checks, as well as a show floor with 40 plus vendors who highlight their services and the resources they can offer to expecting mothers, to children and families with um, infants. There are giveaways, door prizes, as well as over 250 baby bags that will be filled with diapers and infant supplies. And those are given to participants on a first come, first serve basis while supplies last. This event will be held at the Patterson Park Community Center. It's at 521 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard here in Murfreesboro. It is in Murfreesboro, but not restricted by zip code. We invite anyone in the county and in our surrounding area to come and participate. And that again is Saturday, February 4th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That does conclude my report. I'll be glad to take any questions. Or Commissioner Wilson. Thank you, Director. Um, I believe the last time we had like the free flu shot day, you made a nice graphic for us to share on social media. Will you have one of those or could you do something for the community baby shower, Correct. something we could share? Of course, yes, sir. And we do have a, a, a graphic image posted on our website on the landing page for the health department. Um, this is an example of it right here, but I would be glad to uh, ask Ms. Leahy, you'd send that out to the commissioners. And so you could post it on your social media, share it with your constituents. Absolutely, sir. I, and I have several copies, so I'll be glad to leave you one. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. Um, are you all in need of items or anything for this particular event, or are you pretty good to go on it? I think we're getting good to go on that. Of course, if you want to contact us, we we can, uh, um, there is actually uh, contact information, maybe not on this one. I can get you contact information. If you believe that you have any organizations that would like to pitch in or anything, um, they, they have kind of been advertising this among people who have participated in the past but I'd be glad to get you that contact information because I know, you know, more hands, more help, we're, we're always looking for that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner McMurray, good question. Any other questions, Commissioner Oliver? Yes, please. Um, Director, quick question. Um, regarding the dissolution of AIDS, education, prevention, et cetera, yes, how is that gonna impact you? That remains to be seen for us. Um, you know, what the governor has indicated is that they, they believe that they can handle that, uh, those services that were being provided in another way. And so we're still looking to see what the guidance is going to be on that. But it, it, very- I see very, your surveillance and it's, the numbers are still there. So I was just curious. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think more directly that may impact these, um, these other community groups that have been able to help with uh, PrEP and other kinds of you know, uh, services to those affected communities but uh, we will keep a close eye on that and, and look to update you on that if anything should change on our side. Commissioner McMurray. Yes, sir, I have another quick question, it's, um, off, not related. In regards to like CPR classes and things like that, um, do you all off, offer those to like churches, organizations and things like that? I don't believe our health educators do the CPR classes directly, but I believe that we could definitely put you in touch with someone, maybe from our emergency response or something like that, who, who could offer that if you had uh, an organization that was interested in like a group, group presentation. Yes, sir, thank you. Commissioner. Commissioner Hope Oliver is a CPR instructor certified, so <laughs> just so you know. In-house. You Wonderful. may be coming Wonderful. to his church soon doing a class. <laughs> if there are no more questions, I'd entertain a motion to approve the report. Is there a second? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Report passes. Thank you. Thank you, Director.
Next on the agenda is uh, community care. Um, a, a couple of items. Um, number one, we uh, the minutes were posted. The community care report minutes were posted from the December the 5th meeting, excuse me, January the 5th meeting. A couple of highlights. Um, Accounts receivable aging remains in good standing, which is good. Uh, consolidated financial gain 54.4 for the month. Operating funds of 4.9 million. So those are good. Census of 82, I believe. I think their capacity is in the 90s. Hmm? I think it's 101. Is it 101? Okay. Um, and there is, uh, you may have noticed there has been some, uh, an infraction of some kind was reported and it made the minutes. Uh, and there were two meetings between now and the community care meeting of January 5th. January the 12th and the 13th, there were hearings on this matter and I think we may have resolved the concerns in that that had held up admissions and payments. And Mayor Carr, I believe, has a comment about that. So there was a, a violation, and essentially what the violation was, was we had um, a resident um, walk out the door and without the knowledge, it was quickly recovered. Having said that, the state came in and issued three different findings. Um, community care, UCH, appealed and the negotiated uh, with an initial fine of $7,500, the state came back and then said, um, we will settle for one finding for a fine of $3,000. Um, we're now in the process of working with the lawyers. I say we, uh, Evan Cope is the attorney for um, the board and Mr. Cope is working with UCH to determine who uh, to ensure or to try to get us indemnified from that $3,000 fine uh, paid for by community care. Um, admissions are now uh, open and the fine um, has been agreed to. We're just now trying to determine if UCH is gonna pay the fine or will it be community care? Thank you and that, I, I do recall that I had heard that that was a self-reported uh, incidence. That the, is correct. The staff reported the fact that, that somebody walked out, it made it onto the report, state read the report, the state has to respond to uh, someone, quote, I don't want to say escaping, that's the wrong term, but someone being unattended. So it was a self-reported incident, so that to whatever that might impact you guys. Also, uh, with community care, I, it, I had it on the report this, or the, on the agenda this month. We at property management have spent some, some months, a couple of meetings, addressing some questions that the newly elected commissioners have asked. Great questions uh, about the mission of community care, the um, applications, who's accepted, are the employees of community care county employees? Are they not? So there's been some great questions raised and some new scrutiny placed on community care, both the lease and their charter and so forth. So um, some of those questions were appropriate for property management because according to the lease property management, the, we have the roof and the exterior of the building, for instance. That's a property management component but property management really doesn't have the lease. It was determined that property management. So we are the group to whom community care reports, and I'd ask that the questions that the commission had come back here that are beyond property management. Having said that, I don't have, I did not set up anybody from community care to be present tonight. I wanted all of us to have a chance to comment on what, what are our concerns, or if there aren't any concerns, you now have access to the lease and some supporting documents, and perhaps you might want to absorb that, consider questions for tonight, for the interim between now and next month, or for next month. 
And I think my job is to, to help collect, collate those questions and then decide who do we need to hear from? Do we need the attorney, the board, the chairman of their board, uh, who is the mayor, uh, speak to us and, and let all of us become familiar with community care, their mission and their future, quite frankly. So I'm, I'll open the floor to any conversation we wanna have and I'm open to the fact that we may simply want to absorb what you have in front of you for next month. So having said that, uh, I'll open the floor for any immediate questions about community care and we'll go from there. Uh, Vice Chair Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I think it would be actually good to come up with some list of things after kind of absorbing if we have any from reviewing the lease agreements and things you provided. Thank you for that. Um, one update, if we could, and I'm trying to remember if it was back in the November, it may have even been in October. Um, what was the status? We were talking about the daycare. And I know we had talked at one point about the possible needing to uh, get the money for that the next time we had gone to the bond market. And I know Mayor Carr had mentioned you had kind of told them maybe we need to think about a different size, a smaller size. Just to kind of remind me, that was a property management discussion and it would still be one, but it kind of goes into operations. Would there be any accountability on the county's part or was the operation of the daycare and all that? I know the funding was gonna go through the county if I remember, was that right? We were discussing doing it? I remember a discussion, Michael, that we talked about something happening where we were going to just, if you could bring that back up, it's been several months. We, we had talked about that when we reached out to our bond council, they did not feel that we could borrow for uh, community care. So you, you are correct, that was discussed about that flowing through us. However, after reaching out to our bond council and the uh, bond attorneys that we use, they both felt that, that, that we would not be allowed to borrow on their behalf essentially letting them piggyback without us being responsible for their debt. And I remember that being part of the discussion. I know Mayor Card even mentioned them. Let's talk about what we're doing to make sure we're building or even discussing the right In size. my understanding from a funding perspective is we kind of had turned that back over to community care. And if they wanted to reach out to, to a bank or through the USDA on their, on their own, then that was my understanding as so we turned that back over to them. Is there any update or anything about the future of doing that, Mayor, if that they had any more discussion about it? As, as a result of um, their better understanding about their inability to go to the piggyback on top of the bond market and with regard to the fact that they were uncertain about the size and scope of a uh, daycare center, ex expanded daycare center, um, that has been somewhat in a paused position for the last 60 days. And so there has been no additional information or movement in regard to uh, the daycare center out there. So there's just been no development since we last spoke about this. It, 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 thanks for bringing that up. It, it, there is some gray area there. Perhaps uh, we could reach out to Chairman McAdoo and just see, because I don't know that there's much energy supporting that. We may almost have to go back to scratch, but we, you and I, this group doesn't make that call, but uh, I sense that we need to bring that back up. So Mr. I'm glad you broached it. Mr. Chairman, may I interject? Please do. So yeah. the impetus was that the, in, this initiative came from the previous mayor, uh, and the impetus was a result of we had a facility, a daycare facility that was in need of repair. If you've never been out there, it's literally two um, mobile homes pushed together and it's a, that's the daycare center, okay? Two double wides is what we've got. And they've been out there for an extended period of time and as double wides are prone to be, uh, they're in a deteriorating condition. So the current capacity out there, I believe is 28. And so the previous mayor and this body were looking at okay, if we're going to um, if we're going to reconstruct or rehabilitate 
or refabricate those existing facilities, let's look at expanding those facilities. And so quickly, as things move around here, it went from being a 28 child facility to upwards to 150 child facility. And so the numbers grew and as again, we were at, we were all over the map. And so I got with uh, the directors at um, community care and I just, I just point blank asked him, I said, your, what is your vision for community care? Is it to be a daycare service or is it to be a facility that focuses on taking care of the elderly? And quite honestly, it was a very good discussion because they realized that they had what's called mission creep, which is not uncommon and that's not a derogatory thing. I mean, it happens, it happens to all of us. You get a good idea and you start talking about it and you think you can make it a great idea and sometimes you think a great idea is a bigger idea, which many times is the exact opposite. So what happened is, is in the course of time, as uh, Mr. Smith has commented, we tried to piggyback or looked at the idea of piggybacking funding on top of a bond or the school bond issue. That wasn't going to happen uh, given the requirements of issuing uh, a general obligation bond for the county. And so um, they've retreated back to something much smaller, um, but now they're interested, they're, they've got to find solutions to how they provide funding. So that's just essentially where we're at. Having a moment to think about that, uh, Chairman Phillips, um, where do you think that topic resides? Uh, the topic of choosing to build a daycare out there, and ha is that an operational matter or a policy matter where this board would have influence to relook at it, or is that a physical plant matter that property management would look at? My thought was that it came from the mayor's office initially. Um, and, and one of the thoughts behind that was not exclusively just to build it because we could build it, but there are a number of growing county employees that work odd shifts and odd schedules. And, and that's the uh, uh, one of the thoughts behind that. Um, and, and all it was, was in kind of the planning stages. Didn't mean that we were committed to it or anything else, but we were looking into it. I think uh, Mayor Carr has also looked into it and and it appears that uh, community care is, is probably not as um, into the process as the commission and the mayor from last year uh, was looking into it. My thoughts are just my thoughts, and my thoughts are uh, that this is not a, uh, an urgent situation for us to look into. We've got other questions that have been brought up that need to be answered and decisions made before we look at expanding into a daycare center. We need to look at these other issues first. So if there is such a thing as putting something on the back burner, it's this commissioner's opinion that that's where it is and probably where it will stay until a lot of other decisions are reached and commitments are made. I think that's well put. So let, just for our minutes, we're gonna, as, as a, that being on our agenda, we consider that topic on the back burner and we do not anticipate any expenses or any action or any approval of any action on, in that, on that topic until this board has some consideration of it. The uh, daycare did uh, turn a $7,000 profit out there this month, according to the minutes. Um, I think we're, if, if there are any other questions on, on the lease, or are we, or do, would y'all agree that, that you would want to absorb this? And we, we know now that the operation and mission of this project is on future, on next month, let's be sure that next month we, we reconsider our commitment mission and any questions we have about community care. Is that sufficient for tonight? Mr. Chairman, it might be a good idea, um, like at our next commission meeting, uh, you could make an announcement to field questions if people wanted to write those questions into you and then we could have those questions actually prepared for this next meeting and proper answers could be made, whether it's the mayor or the county attorney 
or the attorney for uh, the board itself. Okay. So uh, it might be good to say, if you have questions, uh, we'll be discussing those at the uh, next health and ed meeting. Uh, so send them to me in writing so that we can have our council, uh, the mayor, uh, and the board, uh, since the mayor is chairman of the board, be in, in a better position to answer those okay. questions. Some what of them could be pretty tough, and that would just be a suggestion. Yes, I think that's a great suggestion to, to, to get the whole commission engaged to be able to, to so perhaps on the agenda for the next full commission is there may be some discussion we and submit questions. So two, two outcomes for that. So help me with that, Rachel. We'll All righty, I will move on. I don't think there's a need for a motion on that, on this uh, particular report. Uh, special projects, uh, Director Smith. I do not have any special projects report update for you tonight. That's why you don't have uh, anything on your, on your iPad for that. We've really had no changes since um, the month of November when you saw that report. We have paid a few expenditures. Um, um, so I did not prepare a, a new report just to add a few expenditures to that. Um, but I'll take any questions you have um, regarding that. Um, I would suggest that we drop the report in, in its static state into the, into the SharePoint then. Because I don't think it's up there this, is it? No, I, I did not prepare one. We, um, we've been a 1099s and W2 season is, is pretty busy for us in our office. Uh, I had somebody up here Saturday till, till 11 p.m. Running, running W2s. Okay. So, uh, but I'll be glad to drop the one from November. I can send that or have Rachel drop that in there if that works. Yeah, even, yeah so um, even if it's static, I yep. think I would like for this committee to be able to have access to it. To just, again, it's a, we're trying to learn what the, the purpose of the report is and how to read it. So if nothing else, we just could have some fundamental questions. We can do that. Commissioner Oliver. Um, I was gonna ask about the expenditures that you spoke of, will those be in your report? I, I haven't done it. I can do an updated one um, for you. I have not done, those are just routine bills that we get that would have been in our contracts to date, our POs that we had already pulled. So for example, um, there may have been a small payment on something um, like a Plainville Elementary that we were closing out. There could have been something like that. that was already approved. And so since there was nothing new, no new contracts that I had, um, I did not update that. But, but I can. I can get you that if you need to, specifics. I see. Thank you. And I think those expenditures weren't amendments that went through budget. They were just no, no, no. cutting checks for approved uh, contracts. That's correct. All right, the uh, next item is uh, school board. We could have uh, Chairman Sullivan, excuse me, Director Sullivan. Do you want, uh, do you want your finance director to join you? <laughs> you're, you're free to come up, Brian. All right, good evening, commissioners, mayor, uh, finance director. So we have several things. First, we'll start with our budget amendments, if that's okay. Yes, sir. So we will start with December 15th first. So we have three different meetings since we didn't have a health and ed meeting last month. First one is December 15th of 2022. So this is fund 141 general purpose school budget amendment. This amendment increases budget 141 revenue and expenditures to- I'm sorry, excuse me just yeah. a sec. Could y'all hear him? No. It sounds really quiet back here. Is that any better? I'm gonna, a little I'm gonna better? flip you off and on and then- That's not nice. And, excuse me. <laughs> you were on, but it didn't- is that any better? Not really? Rachel's reaching IT to see if they can. That's great, Commissioner, thank you. Well, you're the closest one to them. <laughs> <laughs> any better at all? A little bit. I can talk louder too. Go for it, okay. All right, so this is December 15th, 2022, Fund 141 General Purpose School Budget Amendment. So this is looking at voluntary pre-K grant. So this amendment increases budgeted Fund 141 revenue and expenditures to recognize the additional awarded amount of the fiscal year 22-23 voluntary pre-K grant. This reflects the additional amount of $88,983 to the grant award that was approved by the State Department of Education. This additional grant award will support the opening of a 22nd voluntary pre-K classroom in Rutherford County Schools. The 
class, the classroom location will be Plainview Elementary. We currently have a full class of 20 VPK students. We have an additional 40 income qualifying four-year-old students on the waiting list for Plainview Elementary School and Christian Elementary Schools that will help fill the seats in an additional Plainview Elementary VPK classroom. So recommended motion to amend the fiscal year 22-23 general purpose school budget as presented for a total of $88,983 to budget for additional voluntary pre-K grant funding. Move to approve. Second. Uh, com uh, Vice Chair Wilson was the first and Commissioner Oliver was the second. Or you could flop those because they were both. <laughs> And uh, just while we're in discussion real quick, if you would just speak to what we were talking about before, just any time we have a grant, I'm, we always ask about, is there going to be a recurring expense in the next year's budget because a grant won't be renewed? And I think that's always important for us to talk about whenever we're receiving one of the grants. Yes. So this is largely grant funded. We have 20, this would be our 22nd classroom. We have 12 of them at our John Coleman Annex in Smyrna. That is where their largest location is. The, you'll see this award was for an additional classroom, which is 88,000. That is supposed to cover a teaching position, two EAs and instructional supplies to start the classroom. With benefits, it doesn't quite cover all of it. So we do general purpose have to fund a little bit of it. Um, but this is a statewide grant that is not part of TISA. If it were to go away, it is something that we probably would also have to go away with because that is taking up 22 classrooms in our district that we are looking at. That is our only barrier. This is a very competitive grant on the statewide level. And so anytime we can get an additional classroom, we always ask for an additional classroom. And this year we are granted an additional one. So the only thing that I see taking it away would be our own growth hurting us in that area. If there's no further discussion, we have a motion to second. Would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Oliver? Aye. Commissioner Davidson? Yes. Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Mr. Bullweed? Yes. Mr. McMurray? I abstain. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Chairman Dodd? Yes. Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, real quick, I just want to clarify. The reason why I did is because I have a four-year-old um, in pre-K, so I did not want to have a conflict of interest. Appreciate that, Commissioner. Thank you. All right, so next we will move to our January 19th and we will start with Fund 141. So this is our general purpose school budget amendment tab. It is a very large tab. Um, this budget amendment cleans up expenditure line items at mid-year. On the revenue side, this budget's amended to reflect collections of disproportionality from IDEA federal funds or special education. On the expenditure side, the larger items of this cleanup amendment reflect the higher cost and demand of custodial supplies, school maintenance supplies, and parts, instructional support supplies and materials. Also adjustments to salary lines include additional approved positions not originally budgeted or transferring salaries to their correct account numbers. This amendment has a net increase of both current year revenue and expenditures of 375,000 with no use of fund balance. Recommended motion to amend 141 to clean up revenue and expenditure lines for a net increase of 375,000 for both revenue and expenditures. Any questions on that? And my understanding is it's simply moving funds. The funds were pulled out of a budget from last year, put in the general fund and going back to its proper place this year. And if that's how y'all understand it as well, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Oliver? Aye. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Boyd? Yes. Mr. McMurray? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Chairman Dodd? Yes. Motion passes. All right, thank you, commissioners. And the last one we have is our centralized cafeteria fund budget amendment, fund 143. So centralized cafeteria, this fiscal year 22-23 centralized cafeteria fund amendment is to increase equipment and supply line items due to prior year, prior year encumbrances becoming actual expenditures in this current fiscal year. It also amends these lines to cover higher costs for equipment replacement and supplies. A portion of this amendment was prior year obligated money that rolled into fund balance and being is allocated to respective line items to cover the prior 
prior year obligations that are now current year actual expenditures. Recommended motion to approve the fiscal year 22-23 fund 143 budget amendment of $850,000 decrease in fund balance and $850,000 increase in expenditures for the increased cost of supplies and equipment as well as prior year obligations becoming current year expenditures in the centralized cafeteria fund. This is something you will see quite often yearly as we end years with our um, encumbrances having to roll into fund balance and then we have to come back and purchase them once school starts. So similar, similar to the last one, New Deal, the money's big and the motion was read quickly. It, it, it's no disrespect for that amount of money, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bookkeeping. It's, it's my record. Uh, any discussion? Move motion to approve. To, we have a second. Commissioner Boyd and Commissioner Gooch. Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Oliver? Aye. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Boyd? Yes. Mr. McMurray? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Chairman Dodd? Yes. Motion passes. All right, thank you, Commissioner. So next, I just want to give you an update on where we are, the Board of Education update-wise. Um, we have an enrollment summary as well. Brian, would you mind giving that to everybody real quick? I'll give you these each month just so that you can have them as record to see where our enrollment trends are. We are sitting at 51,010, um, so very much in line with where we have been. You will notice that our December or our January numbers drop off just a little bit because we have students who graduate early in December. We are still funded for those students when they graduate early. We don't, we're not punished as a district for students moving on early, but you will see our numbers decrease by a couple hundred from previous reports because they did graduate. Um, our virtual school, for example, I graduated 60 kids early just themselves. Thank you. So just wanted you to have that copy. You see, again, some of our schools that we watch. Um, Blackman Elementary is 1,115 students. Blackman Middle is our largest middle school in the state of Tennessee, sits at 1637. And I, again, this shows you by demographics. Next month, I will show you just by grade level specific, and I'll alternate those months as we've been doing. So I'll be happy to answer any questions, enrollment trends, anything like that. If you don't mind, please. Uh, please, Commissioner Davidson. Um, so we've all kind of taken tours through all the schools or I've managed to make it to one. Um, but one of the things that we've kind of, um, I thought we were getting, but we don't have it today. We wanted to see the kind of a maintenance report while we are looking at building and growing. I wanted to see the maintenance report to see where we're at with the existing schools. If you could get that for us. Absolutely can. So that's part of our fund 177 that we look at and I'll bring an updated report next time. Thank yep, you, no problem at all. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I, I think we've we've brushed on that report and we failed to have it. So that great question. Um, and that's something that we we do need. I mean, that's a big part of our. Yep. Not just considering remodeling other schools. It's just such a large expense. So thank you for that. And Dr. Sullivan, was one of the things being discussed at the Board of Education meeting being that we actually have kind of two two plans we're working on. I mean, one is capital projects, but one is also maintenance. Yep. Did I hear it discussed with Trey Lee or there was yeah. something where you were discussing having a plan for maintenance separate from capital projects because we have to look at both. Is that am I right on that? I'd be happy to. And Chairman Dodd, do you mind if I go into kind of where we are update wise I, as a district? I think that'd be great. Okay. If you can clarify that. I definitely can. Even so. that, the two reports. So for, we are just about to start our budget season. Um, we are meeting with each principal individually. We started this week, principal request in Tennessee code annotated have to be submitted to the director of schools. So they are submitting our request as Brian can attest to. We are meeting with each principal individually for 45 minutes to go through their request. Part of that is capital projects and maintenance and so that they're getting direct impact on that. When we are thinking about our district and our county commission, I, I've said this in every board meeting, I sincerely mean this, our county commission funds us the best that we possibly can with the revenue that is available, and we appreciate that. So no when we are talking about revenue, you guys truly are giving us everything that you possibly can. When I talked to um, Finance Director Smith and he was talking to me about the amount of debt that the county school system still has, I think that shows you how much support there has been for the school system overall. We're just growing so large, we don't have a lot of options. Um, so there's a couple things that I did wanna talk about when we're talking about our buckets of money. Our first one is our general purpose school budget. That's our 141 account. So that 141 account this school year, it was budgeted at revenue of $464 million and we had expenditures of $493 million. So 
right off the bat, we are looking at a $30 million deficit in our general purpose school budget. Um, TISA will help write a lot of that. Um, so that is when you hear about the extra funding with TISA, we know that is an area. So you're almost looking at half a billion dollars that our county funds for general education. So that's, that's huge and we appreciate that. The other two smaller funds, but just small in comparison, is we are looking at our 143, which is our cafeteria, which we just did an amendment for. That's roughly 22 to 24 million, depending on the year. And then we have our, one, our fund 177, our capital projects, which I believe has been called the bull and nickel, is that correct? Is that what we bull and nickel from Yep, that's what I thought. So that roughly comes out to, I think we've had seven and a half cents allocated to us, um, $7 million. We are so far in the negative this previous year in the fiscal year in our 141, because we moved some cents over. The county commission approved us to move some pennies over to try to tackle that. So we had about 18 million in that fund 177 this year. So that's kind of your, 500 million for a rough estimate in 141, 143 cafeteria, you're looking at 22 to 24, and then somewhere between seven and 18 or 19 million, depending on how property tax pennies are allocated um, for our capital projects. Then we get into our, of course, our building project. And our building project to where our additions, our new buildings, all those different types of things. Um, and talking with Michael, we looked at, even at the end of this school year, once county school system makes payments on some of our debts, we still have 350 million in debt um, that we are paying for schools 10, 15 years ago that we are looking at. Um, knowing that we are also in the middle of having a five-year discussion uh, five-year building plan, the health and ed and the commission has asked for an updated plan where we are, their five-year plan. Our board votes on that on February 9th, um, and I'll be happy to get into a little bit of specifics without talking above what the board's plans are here in just a second. Um, but I wanted to give you an overview of kind of what funds we are talking about since a lot of us, including myself and Brian, are new to presenting a lot of this information um, as well. So any questions just about the overall portions of where our money is coming from? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Oliver. Yes, sir, Director. I was curious. Um, you were saying that you're meeting with principals to submit their reports. Are there any parameters given to the principals as it relates to maybe how much maintenance they're allotted or whatever the case may be? So Tennessee Code Annotated gives them areas that they can submit budget requests. It's staffing, instructional, and I may miss one off the top of my head, instructional materials and supplies professional development, technology hardware, technology software, and then building maintenance. And so we are truly asking them for, we may not be able to fund everything right now, but where you find is that schools principals may say, I don't need anything this year, there's other schools in a bigger need. That hurts us and ultimately hurts our school system in our county because that doesn't tell us an accurate picture of what our schools are. And so we've asked them to truly include every single thing that is there. So we have requests from awnings to gymnasiums to cut down, I just was I was back there typing away, if you could hear me, I'm sorry, I'm typing away some of their requests in, um, to cut down Bradford pairs from the lining because they're blocking a security camera. So they, they truly have done a really good job of telling us what those requests are. From that, then our departments do requests as well, and that's where we start building our budget from. And when do those meetings begin? Yes, is today just Tuesday? Yes, sir. Wow, we had nine today in 45 minute increments, so. Okay, yes. so they started today. Yeah, they started oh, yes, yesterday. yesterday, I see. Yes, yes, and with 50 buildings and really 51 with Roy Waldron Annex, it, it is the next two weeks. And yes, we could do that. They have to submit them to us electronically, but we feel like it's vitally important to get their feedback. They're the ones in their buildings every day. Mr. Davidson. So one of the things that I think that we looked at when we toured Laverne High School was the really dark hallways and the not super great uh, ceiling tiles and a lot of trash bags over water coolers, things, you know, just those kind of things. And we, I think we went into one classroom where she painted just as far as she could reach. And so I know that there's a budget and I know that there's a shortfall and I know that these teachers and these principals are doing the very best with what they have and you are doing the very best with what you have. My question for you is if the community could get involved with some of these things, if there is a shortfall and it's just not something that our schools can handle right now, like we just, we can't get to the paint, we can't, could the community become involved or is that a no? No, absolutely, you see any reason from a financial standpoint, we always could. 
Um, if it was somebody actually doing work, we'd have to work through some liability issues. But if it's as far as donating supplies, donating material, funding, we can always do that. But if it's people doing work, we'd probably need to work through some liability issues. But I have no doubt we could work through that. Well, I kind of sort of reached out to a few of the people in my community. And so maybe like spring break or summer or things of that nature, um, they would absolutely love to get involved if it just meant you know, getting paint donated and trying to paint the ceiling tiles that maybe we can't replace or, you know, redoing some doors. We saw some doors that weren't kind of great, <laughs> but, you know, and helping these teachers paint their walls. So there was actually some excitement from the community if these are things that you just simply can't find time in your budget for. But I wanted to make sure before I went any further that I, that was okay with you. Absolutely, so we look at it from a, and thank you for doing that, that's great. We are talking, one of the things, painting is one that comes up a lot, is that we have some of our staff that can paint, but ultimately a lot of times our buildings are so big and scaffolding and all that, a lot of times we have to contract that out. In our 399 line for contracted services under building maintenance, I think we have right over, is it 1.1? We've talked about several times the last couple of days. Right at one or 1.1 million, and we were looking at it from the schools, you know, that's us giving each school $20,000. That doesn't go very far, unfortunately. And so I, any support we absolutely can get, I'll work with them to see what we can do. So love that idea. That gets us into the other kind of portion of it. So something that we're exploring, I don't know where we're gonna go, but I want you to know about it in case you hear our school board talking about it. So we're exploring an ESPC grant, which is an energy savings performance contract, not grant, sorry, contract. We are trying to do everything that we possibly can for areas that we can potentially have funding to not have to come to the county commission and say, we need funding for this, funding for this, funding for this. Being a public school system, we don't have a lot of those places. Um, some other school districts across the state, and there's pros and cons to it, are looking at, have used this in the past, and it's something we're exploring. It is a way that you basically have a contract with a third party company, and then you partner with them for 10, 15, 20 years, and they put LED lights into your schools, and then that savings for your LED lights then goes through and pays for some of your deferred maintenance. We're exploring that. Um, the approval process for us is first, we have to have a contract. We don't have a contract yet. Our legal team has to approve a contract. The comptroller's office has to approve a contract. And then we would have to come to the commission to have a resolution supporting that. We are trying to do things that aren't going to affect the bond market or the bond rating, not require extra funding. I don't know that it's gonna get anywhere, but it's something we're exploring other options because we realize the burden the school system places on taxpayers in the county. So we'll talk more about that over the next couple of months, but I just want to lay the groundwork if you hear about it. The, it's an ES, e, yeah, ESPC, the company that we've looked at, at is CMTA. I have no idea what CMTA stands for, do you? No clue, no clue. But the Comptroller's Office as of 2021 has to approve that. I know that um, Mayor Stretcher Smith's worked on one of these in a former, there's pros and cons to it. The negative is we have 200 million in deferred maintenance, like you've talked about with HVAC, electrical, roofing, plumbing, all those things. This would allow us to tackle 40 to 50 million of it, depending over the next couple of years. Not great, but it's an option instead of having to ask extra taxes. Any questions on that part? Sounds like uh, we did a we did a with the electric department. We did lights through the schools and. So we, we funded the, the electric, some, some third party funded the, the remod, the uh, addition, the maintenance, and then we got a rebate on the electric bill or something. So we've had some good experience with similar avenues. If, is it, am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to re remember my mind. Is that, so all new schools already have that? Um, in some places, yes. Plan our newest schools have them everywhere, but some of, like Rocky Fork, we had it everywhere, but I think we were the first school to have them all. Okay, and it was my recollection that we did some installation or new lighting, and then the company that we did it with guaranteed that we would save so much, and they were monitoring that. So how many schools needing to be upgraded or? I'll get that exact. 
I'll get that exact list. Um, I would well, I, yeah, I was just curious. I know that the biggest, so they did an energy audit for us. I know the schools that have the biggest ones right now are our schools that, and from an instruction standpoint, they're amazing. From an energy saving standpoint, they're not great. The middle schools we built in the 2000s to 2012-ish, um, Blackman Middle, Christiana Middle, those schools are our biggest energy users. Um, and so they are our least energy efficient that are causing us the most. The other thing it allows us to do is it allows us to replace, and I know we don't want to talk about it, but it is an issue. It allows us to replace some of our athletic fields with LED lights. Um, that helps county rec as well because we have some places that county rec uses and we wouldn't have to necessarily worry about funding some of those things, so. We look forward to, to hearing about that as your board progresses. And the last part is the uh, updated five-year plan. So that's the one that just has everybody just really excited to talk about. Um, so we realize we continue to grow. So part of this five-year plan, our board will adopt. I've asked them to adopt it February 9th so that we can tell you what we're requesting and that you guys have time to then give us feedback on what we need to do as well. I also realize that we're in the middle of a zoning study. So I totally anticipate this five-year plan being modified after we know what's going on with zoning and we have time to dissect it, go through it in April and May. And so we, again, every year do that five-year plan, but we're hoping to have more of a, within a 10 years, this is what we're looking at. Um, our board, I've kind of provided, so that's my direction as the director of schools, is to provide suggestions. And then I have to come before you and tell you what they request. So we have two options we're looking at right now. Um, last year, there was a lot of discussion around annexes and additions. Um, there was an agreement in funding, not funding, all that type of thing, but nothing truly went to the bond market. So although it is a five-year plan, really this is a six-year plan because it is last year stuff rolled into an additional year. And so I believe our school board, and I don't want to speak for them, I texted them this afternoon and said, I am bringing this up, but I'm not speaking for you because you guys have not made a, a motion or anything yet, we will request three additions in an elementary school. Um, our elementary schools, we've talked about quite a bit, are where we are struggling, um, especially on the Blackman Stewart's Creek, that area. So that's what we're looking at. I've also asked them to look at the addition. There's been discussions for additions at those elementary schools. It is more cost effective, not necessarily what's best for instruction for students, but it is more cost effective. I don't think that's anywhere that we want to go, but it's something that we also have to realize we don't raise our own funds. We have to be thankful for what we have and move forward. Over the next five years, without any changes to because of the rezoning, I do anticipate needing at least two elementary, two middle, and two high schools if our growth continues like we're going, which from a cost perspective is terrifying to say the least, but we have to put our students somewhere. Um, and we're, we have used just about every nook and cranny that we know how to use. And I don't know any other way to put that other than, I'm sorry I have to come up here and say that being the new guy to come up here and do it, but it's my job to advocate for our school system. and. I appreciate all the support we get already. I'm Mayor Carr, answer any questions. Had a comment. We recognize Mayor Carr. He had a comment. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan. This is I've, this is the first I've heard of this. Yes. So, um, I guess my question is, since we're expanding uh, the size of the five-year growth plan to six years, I would assume um, the proposal for uh, what we're going to or you're going to propose we take to the bond market is also expanded. Would that be correct? Correct. That being the case, do you know what that number is? If we have, est I have an estimate. So estimating if we are looking at the three additions, I think our three additions for the high schools were somewhere between the 130 and 140 million mark. In elementary school, we're looking somewhere between 40 and 60, depending on where it comes from. So almost $200 million. So you're now asking for anywhere between 190 and $200 million, correct? To go to the bond market. Correct. You just got through telling us a few minutes ago that our current indebtedness was $400 million. Is that correct? Correct. Now, my last cast this math says you're going to increase our indebtedness by 50%. Would that be right? Yes, sir. It's what it seems like the request would be. Okay. What I want to know is this. With regard to the high schools, to what extent does the renovation on the high school then address the challenges we're having in classroom sizes and remediate the portables that we've also have in those same high schools. So the high school. I would have liked to have had this conversation in my office, but hey, it is what it is. What it is, yeah. But but also, I just if I may, just to, uh, I think the director of schools was anticipating some. So I think this is a precursor to the board's action. So it is. Uh, 
w I think this could be a healthy debate, but he's not making a motion or asking for this money. But that I, is a, correct. A, a courtesy of a, a, an open forum allowing us to contemplate these are what could be coming in addition to a $506 million budget from the current year. So be that as it may, I'm glad you're directing your, your points, but a motion hasn't been made, nor is this a request, but it is an opportunity to, for you to continue, continue your discussion. Uh, your chastisement is noted, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't, what I want to also bring up is that this request is no different than last year's um, annex. So with Riverdale, Smyrna, and Oakland, those are the three that had so much discussion last year prior to any of us being in this position. Those were the three that were discussed a lot. We have had discussion, we've had discussion in health and ed as well about our need for either an elementary school or Stewart Street Elementary Edition or a Blackman Elementary Edition. And that's all that this request adds is something to do with that Blackman Elementary, Stewart Street Elementary corridor, whether that is additions at each one of those elementary schools or the property we're looking at that is called the Beatty property, of course, is the property that we're still do, going through our due diligence with testing. We haven't formally approved anything. I think our day is March 15th or somewhere right around there for where we have to make a decision um, before we have to either walk away or, or make a decision on. Um, if we are able to secure that property, then that gives us an option to build an elementary school. Right now, we have no property to build an elementary school. And so I think that's part of the discussion as well. We don't have anywhere to build an elementary. That is true, but it is your anticipation that you will make an offer, a substantial offer on a piece of property at uh, Baker Road and One Mile Lane. Is that not correct? Correct. I believe that's, that's already under contract right now. We just have the option to be able to walk away while we're doing our inspection. That's correct. So you have the opportunity to exercise that option one way or the other. Correct. It's your anticipation to put that elementary school on that particular location. Is that correct? I would hope so. I guess I'll wrap up. Have, has, have you and the board prioritized th the need with regard to this potential $200 million request? I think their priority, they sent the priorities last year, it was sent back to them, they sent all five, it was sent back to them to prioritize with three, and so they are sending those three back that was agreed upon. I don't even know the right way to say it was agreed upon, but it was agreed upon um, without funding, agreed upon and adding an elementary school. Okay, no, that's not my question. Let me say it another way. Within this list that of potential proposed funding, is there a hierarchy f one through five that you and the school board have arrived at in order of importance? There's not yet because they haven't officially adopted a five-year plan yet. Okay. And when do you anticipate them doing that? Very nice. Excellent. Thank you, yeah. sir. And thank you for your contribution, Mayor. I, I, I appreciate that. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Gooch. Hey, thank you, Chair. Um, just curious, has the any communication or knowledge or you had mentioned elementary schools is a big need uh, is the city school board planning any elementary schools that you know of they have one that they are in discussion for um, I don't believe they've done anything with that um, so far but they have had that mentioned as part of I believe in their September or October I don't follow them as closely but dr. Duke and I talk quite a bit they're looking at it as an elementary school as well and do you know what general area they're they're looking at the, the west, the west, west side west. as well, yeah, because their schools they have overall creek as well that's overcrowded, so they have that west side overcrowded just like we are. Where we're struggling right now is with the west side, just like the city school system is. Their overall creek scales area is overcrowded, just like our Blackman area is overcrowded, Stewart's Creek, and so some of those schools are dual zoned, so students depending on that situation they bounce back and forth between us throughout the school year. So. Does that conclude your report? That concludes. I knew it would be fun, but that's um, fine. I appreciate the conversation. So, uh, again, I, I think we've stressed every month there, these are huge numbers on, on top of a previous huge budget where school board had to dip in 30 million to, to balance. Uh, the five-year plan, was it 421 million, as, as I recall last year? Right. We had some 90 million a year was, I recall Chairman Phillips just acknowledging what a huge number that was. And so that five-year plan wasn't touched, so it's only grown. And I'm glad that Mayor Carr interjected, we, we need to see a priority of, 
because I'm not a fan of a 200, we can't go to $200 million, to the bond market for $200 million. So I think the mayor was very timely to, to set that tone. So I, I know these are tough items and they're gonna be contentious, but let's just look forward to, to as we go, we have some big decisions to make. Chairman Phillips. I don't want to open up a whole new topic, but we talked about the cafeteria fund a little earlier, and that fund in my tenure up here has grown to the point where it would choke a horse. Um, if you could bring back to this committee next month how the cafeteria fund works. Absolutely. Who pays that. for their lunches, yep. who doesn't pay for their lunches, what qualifies, what percentage, and then kind of up on that a little bit. I think we grew about 2,000 kids this year. Correct. Somewhere in that neighborhood. And how did the percentage of, of who pays and who doesn't pays go up? Just so we will I, know who's moving in. I would be happy to. And just to hit on that, I'll bring that for you absolutely next month. So we are district wide. So the state report cards updated their numbers. So our school system is 54% Caucasian. So in the next couple of years, there will more than likely not be a majority um, demographic or race in Rutherford County schools. I think that gets lost sometimes in how diverse we truly are as a county. The north end of our school system is our title one schools, our highest poverty um, and Kittrell as well as one of our title one schools. Those schools do have the highest rate of student debt, which we would expect. Um, Commissioner Schwinn, who is our Commissioner of Education for the state of Tennessee, met with Middle Tennessee School Directors uh, two weeks ago on Friday, and one of the things she talked about was the number of undocumented students, especially in the north end of Rutherford County. Those students don't necessarily, for fear of repercussions, fill out your free and reduced lunch forms. And so we do have some of our schools on the north end who have twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars in student debt that's not really enforceable for us to go and, and figure out. We we can't look at that. We have to educate students as they come to us. And so we educate all of our students, but there's not necessarily an enforcement. Unfortunately, it ends up coming out of our 143 cafeteria fund or general purpose. And we go back and, and subsidize, for lack of a better word, for those funds that we have made up so that all students can eat. But I'll be happy to go over that. Yeah. I have a quick question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, it's kind of off topic real quick. Um, being a, I'm in healthcare and things like that. Uh, I know cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death in young athletes. And with the recent um, incident three weeks ago with the football player, are all of our schools equipped with the um, the automatic, I'm oh, sorry, automated external defibrillators, and also our sporting facilities? Um, that's my one question. And then the next question would be. Um, are all of our coaches um, trained on how to use those? Because I know sometimes we don't have paramedics at every single sporting event. So, and not just for our athletes, but someone in the stands could have some type of problem. So for me, that's been on my heart for the past three weeks to see and to make sure our schools are equipped with those because um, that's um, yep. something Happy serious. Happy to answer. So that's something that we're, we're proud of. We're a gold standard district with TSSAA, which means that we have met all other spe specifications above and beyond. All of our schools have AEDs. And opening, I was blessed to open Rocky Fork Middle School. And so in opening a middle school, I was in, got to be involved in the specific placement of where are we putting those AEDs. By the gym, by the front office, one on the outside that goes out to your athletic fields. All of our schools have had that same discussion. They also have to go through training yearly, just like you do a fire drill, lockdown drill, all those different types of drills to where they open it up, practice, all that different type of thing. Um, absolutely, and then middle and high school athletic events that we have, continuing our partnership with um, TOA and St. Thomas, they've gone through and continued to fund extra grants for us. Um, I believe one of the first things this commission did was had to accept a grant from them, if I'm recalling correctly, but it could have been before, I don't remember. I know that our board has approved that as well, um, but that allows us to fund athletic trainers at all of our middle and high school athletic events. Yep. Also, uh, Commissioner McMurray, I can tell you this, for 12 years, helping with the marching band and being a private lesson instructor, uh, considered a volunteer coach through our school system, I'll have you know that from the very beginning, we had to receive a certification with Red Cross on how to do those services every two years. And that was 12 years ago. 
And I got that at Smyrna High School every two years at the school. So even volunteer coaches, people that even part-time are receiving that training at our schools or uh, they're not even put through the system to allow to be that. So that's been going on since I started, that was 12 years ago. Ever want to look at our consent agenda for our board meeting, there's a huge section on volunteer coaches and all of those have submitted their packets to pass those type of things. Great question. May I add one more thing? Yes, Commissioner. <laughs> Relative Oliver. to the AED, the only thing you need to know is how to turn it on. Because it's going to give you instructions. It's going to tell you where to place the patch. It's going to give you all the instructions. So when you take the test, it's always going to ask you what's the first thing to do? Turn it on. Because then it's going to give you all the instructions you need. And do we need to uh, make a motion and approve his report? I'd entertain a motion to approve the. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep. So, so next month we have um, the maintenance report. I think will be a highlight. We'll be able to look at uh, capital projects that Director Smith's going to have, and a cafeteria. So those will be three items. And another recap is we'll have some new questions or even some answers for community care. So uh, any other business? I'll entertain a motion for adjournment if not. You can adjourn.